Hey everybody, uh, I'm here to show off the new Ultra 2024 airbrush from Harder and Steenbeck. Um, this airbrush, I swear, it's the perfect tool to enhance and speed up your miniature painting. And uh, over the last few years, I've gotten back into, uh, I would say, all things Warhammer. And one of my biggest problems is just not having time to paint. And uh, like many other hobbyists, I have a pile of shame. Probably a pile that would put other piles to shame. And honestly, hundreds of models just collecting dust unpainted. And that's where this airbrush comes in. I was always hesitant to uh, buy one because of the cost. But I decided to skip out on the, you know, the next combat patrol box. And just picked up the Ultra instead. And they're actually very similar costs. I actually think the, like a Vanguard or a combat patrol box is actually a little more spendy than these and uh, since then I've been able to cut down the painting time I would say about in half sometimes even more and and I get fantastic results um, it's really the perfect tool for for your first airbrush project all right so let's get into the brush um, I would say it has four features all oh, this here this is the detail just showing you how thin these lines we can get with this brush but like I was saying it has four features that kind of allow you to take it right out of the box um, add your thinner color and start painting but first let's take a look at the cup and this is where we'll be putting in our paint and this connects to the brush um, and it's really easy to get in there you'll see over the top here it doesn't screw in there are other airbrushes some of them come with the uh, cup attached, so it can't be removed. This one's a really entry-level brush. And then another one by uh, Harder and Steenbeck is their Evolution Plus. And this one here comes with a screw for the uh, top cup here. And this one here is a two milliliter, the one on the Ultra is a is a five so going back to this um, one of the neat features about it is in the top here and see you can kind of see how it's curved and lipped that's when if you ever do have a clog coming out from the front here if your paint dries up in here it'll shoot backwards up through and this way when the air is going up through and the paint it won't bubble out instead it'll just kind of bubble inside and shoot itself back down in there very handy if you're someone, I mean, I guess it's really handy for a beginner because you're going to be having those clogs probably initially. But showing this how easy it is to stick in, it's just a simple push with some pressure and maybe give it a little twist. And there you go, it's in. Secondly, would have to be the uh, nozzle. The nozzle cap there and um, the way it's designed gives you visibility in there to the needle and that is a uh, extremely easy for cleaning tip dry so now tip dry is when paint begins to dry on the tip of the needle and this naturally occurs as paint goes through the brush over the needle and this happens even because we can't see it there are small grooves on the needle and then paint particles as they get pushed through the brush and they slide over the needle, um, they will get stuck. And as we push paint through the brush, it'll slowly build up over time, drying, and that leads up to tip dry. It's, it's an inevitable part of airbrushing and there are ways to minimize it, um, which I'll get into as we go on. Uh, so continuing with the tip dry, as we use the brush, um, it's wise to periodically check your needle as you are painting. And when we start seeing color appear, that's a cue to stop. And uh, you're going to want to clean it off sooner rather than later. You'll want to brush with some stiff bristles and just apply some cleaner to that. Then push it through the cap towards the needle. Um, you don't necessarily have to be gentle. It's been engineered in a way that allows us to kind of jam the brush through um, through these angled slots. And then when you do that, 
which it's angled perfectly to the needle. So once you do that, um, you want to force it through just like this. You can even come through the top and do a little twist, but just a similar motion like this with your cleaner on the brush. And you want to jam that through. And then once you don't see color on there anymore, you're able to put the brush down and just go right back to it. You're good to go again. Easy as that. And thirdly, we're going to talk about probably one of the biggest selling points to me is this trigger here. This trigger is going to be great for new painters. It's going to teach you trigger control, and this is going to help you lay down color better and avoid those nasty tip dries. One of the first things you'll do is you'll go to pull it back and you'll realize it will not go back. And that is one of the key features of this brush is it will not let you pull back on the trigger without first starting the air. And why is this important? Because if you're just pulling back, you're not pushing air through, but you're just letting paint fill up in the nozzle. And when it gets in there and dries, you can get some really nasty clogs that will require you to do, um, disassemble the airbrush. So just kind of a quick demonstration of how this works. Once you have your color thinner in the brush, you're basically ready to go. You'll just want to go up to the trigger, push down. When you push down, you're going to hear airflow, but no paint will be coming through. And that's because the, the needle is still fully erect. So you'll push down, pull back. As you pull back, the needle goes back. Now your paint comes out. When you're finished, keep the finger down. You want to maintain airflow throughout the entire process. Once you're fully released back to its original position, that's when you can lift the finger up. You never want to pull it back, be painting, and let go in the back. If you push down and let go in the back like this, that's when the air will be running and you'll suddenly, um, right here when we let go, that's a suddenly cutting off the airflow. Well, what that does is it sends paint remaining right in here and it's going to start getting clogged. And you're going to have a real nasty time on your hands if you get a bunch of paint clogged in here. It's just, I wouldn't say nasty. These brushes are easy to clean out and get back running again quickly, but you will have to stop and it does take away time from painting when you get those clogs. And it's easily avoidable as long as you remember. Push down to start. Down as you're painting the whole way through, always down, return and keep down. Then you can release. I would even say sometimes when I'm painting, I'll start, I'll pull back, return. But if you're still going, there's no reason to let go of that airflow. So I'll just keep it down pretty much the whole time I'm putting paint on a model as long as I'm working continuously. The fourth feature that is unique to the Ultra Brush, it's going to be this collar wrapped around the brush. And this is the piece that's going to make you honestly, honestly, it's going to make you feel like a pro. It has five settings with the sixth just being full, full trigger control. So you get that there. And then you have prime, base, three, two, and then one. And then back to just full control. Each one of these settings is gonna let you lay down color to your desired effect. But importantly, what it does is it's gonna teach you uh, more trigger control. Um, because of the collar being leveled out, you can see it, especially when you go from prime base, when you go base to three, you'll see it come over the top here. And then what this does, it stops you from pulling uh, the trigger back too far and making a mess on your model. So definitely after using other airbrushes over the years, I've, I've never used one that teaches you how to use it. And this one starts doing it right out of the box. Now that we've gone over the features of the brush, um, I want to demonstrate to you how easy it is once we're hooked up to an air compressor. And the model we're going to be doing today is a Terminator from the Leviathan box. And we're going to be doing him as an Imperial Fist. I want to do a heavy Xanathal over the top with some white. And that's before I apply the yellow. To do this, um, we're going to add thinner into the cup and then the paint. Um, you do the paint in the cup. Make sure to put the thinner in first. If you put paint in, it's going to go down, it'll sit out on the front, and that becomes susceptible um, to drying. 
and clogging before we even start. Uh, I'll be using regular acrylic paint. I'll be using uh, Tamiya here. It's not designed to be in the brush, but with thinner we can make it work. Uh, your best option is using paint designed for the brush, like we showed earlier. This Mephiston Red. And um, this model color here also works quite well going through the brush. And that's because they're um, designed to do so. But I've been using regular acrylics um, from Citadel, Vallejo, Tamiya, Model Color, Scale 75. I've been using all of them in the brush. Um, and as long as I've had the proper thinner, I have no issues. Anyways, um, let's get to adding that paint. Okay, uh, we now have the brush hooked up to the compressor and we're running it at about 20 25 psi and i'm going to add my thinner and just kind of show you guys how i thin my paints for my brush something i do first is flow improver i just do a few drops you can think of this as i guess water in a way it helps keep things moist but i usually do one two three three drops and I let that go all the way in. So what that does is it means we have flow improver sitting down here first, which means that'll come out first, go over the needle. And to me, it kind of puts a wet layer over the needle, making the paint go off easier. And I tend to have less tip dry ever since I started doing that. Um, the next step would be thinning. There's all sorts of thinners, um, but since we're using Since we're going to be using Tamiya, we're going to use the uh, Tamiya acrylic paint thinner. And you want to make sure if you do get it, it's the X20A. And the A is for acrylics. And then like I said, we want to do our thinner first. And uh, I use these pipettes. You definitely don't have to. Um, just makes it a lot easier. And like I said, it's not an exact science, um, but I typically do around a one-to-one -one drop of thinner per one drop of paint. So we'll go here, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. We'll do 15. And you can see we have that sitting down at the bottom. Make sure it's shaked well. And now we'll do something very similar, probably around 15 drops if I can. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15. You know what? Let's do 20. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Maybe a little bit more. Just to kind of demonstrate how it's, it's definitely not a science. What I'll usually do then is take a, just a pipe it, give it a little stir. Now, since we're going to be doing a zenith all over the top, let's do a base. It'll be kind of acting the same. Okay, now that we have the paint in the brush, what I usually like to do is spray out and see if we're going to get what we want. This will also be a good time just to demonstrate. Um, pushing down, and the air is coming out, but no paint. 
but as soon as we pull back, and there we go, there comes the white. And then to do a uh, Xenothal, you just want to come right over the head. And with how big this bowl is, you can come over the top, but I just like to hold it like this and we'll go right over. And remember, always down. And you see, the air is coming out, but there's no paint. And the paint will come out as soon as we start pulling back. All right, here we go. Like I said, right over the top, straight down. About, about a hand's width away. We'll just pull back and see what we get. We can take this time real quick to look at the needle. And it definitely has some white on it. So I'm gonna demonstrate that real quick to you guys. We'll use a dish. We've got some cleaner here. Now I could keep going. Um, it's not a lot of paint on there. This will be a quick demonstration of just how easy it is to clean. And like I said, you just jam the needle in. You can even come in from the front here. And then just like that, our needle is clean and we can go right back to what we were doing. I usually give it a one little blast after I clean the front just to get some of that off. And we'll go right back to it. I will angle him a little bit more just to get a little bit more of that in there, but uh, we're definitely getting what we want out of this. We're getting pretty close. I think I'll just do some of this back and this back shoulder. We hold it down and this is all just angling the brush to get that color on there. I definitely want it brightest at the top. We'll do that. Now we're gonna angle the back. We just want a light, light dusting on there. I would say this doesn't look too bad. We got a nice heavy at the top. 
and you can still see some of the red shining through, especially when we go underneath. And that's gonna look really nice once we get the yellow over the top. But before we do that, we have to get the rest of this out of the brush. And I, I purposely put more in so I can demonstrate how we do this. And yeah, we'll go through that process right now of getting uh, the paint color to switch. Okay, there's a few things we can do. I'm gonna show you how I do it. You're definitely gonna want a uh, pot. If you don't need one, you can get a bucket, something bigger. But before we do any of that, we'll take our water cup. We have our paint still in there. By the way, these bottles, if you can get yourself one of these, they're on Amazon, really cheap. Definitely pick one up, they're amazing. Anyways, we'll add a little bit of water. And then what I do is just dump it out a couple times. We'll do it again. And then again. Um, you don't have to do this this many times. I'm just kind of anal, I guess. So this is where the real magic happens. So we'll get our cup here, push this in, make sure it's in all the way. We don't want it spewing back out at us. And now this is where we want to put our trigger on full control. Also, really good cleaner. We'll add some in. And we'll blast it through. So after we um, run this cleaner through a couple times, and I like to uh, rock the trigger back and forth, kind of send bursts of cleaner. If there's any paint in there, kind of let it build up and then shoot out with the cleaner. I'll then use my uh, water cup and just kind of put it right in the hole, blast, and then push a little bit of water through. I leave a little bit at the end. And we can spray that here to see if we still have white. Any white left? And we don't. All we have is water, which is perfect. So it's time to move on to the next color. All right, we'll get our model out. And for our next one, we're gonna be using the good old Imperial Fist. So we're just gonna need our thinner and flow improver. Last time I used the uh, Tamiya thinner, and I could use it for this, it works great, but I just wanna show off um, something different. This is the ultimate um, cleaner, but they also have their thinner. And I think this works fantastic with Citadel paints. They even, um, they even have this fancy cheat sheet and it'll show you how much uh, thinner to add depending on which type of uh, paint you're using. And you can see the Citadel here needs quite a bit compared to a lot of the other ones, but it is a thicker paint. But this is contrast, so it's definitely uh, not gonna need as much, but just something uh, handy out there. If you're having problems um, thinning your paints, this is definitely something uh, I would recommend for a beginner because um, yeah, if you follow this sheet with this thinner, you're not gonna have many issues going through the airbrush with it. Okay, so I'll show you my uh, process for thinning, kind of preparing the paint again. I use my flow improver. It's my little hack for avoiding tip dry. One, two, three, I'll do four just for fun. And then thinner. I'm really not going to need a lot because contrast paint is already quite thin. So I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for five. Well, oh, something close. You know what? We'll just go like eight, nine, ten maybe. That might be too thin. We're going to find out though. But I kind of want it to be thin so I can lay it over on that white pretty well. We'll use the, the pipette again. They're just so handy. I should actually pick up some glass ones though. Some of these chemicals can melt these. So we'll go one, two, 
six, 10, maybe 20. Let's go, go 25, just to mix it up and just kind of show how um, it's not an exact science. Four, take the pipe that we just used. I usually like to give it a spin and then I just push air through. Get as much back out. Now I have it on the, the max setting and then we'll test it out. We'll push some of the paint through. The thinner, the flow improve already came through. And there it comes. And we're at our yellow. Not on the needle at all yet. Now here we go. And like I said, this is the fun part here. And just for that, we're gonna move it to, I'll show you guys on on one. And this is gonna make the paint come out thinner. A uh, trick to going over when you're going over the model is whenever you see it start looking wet, that's when you want to move your brush. And we're already just getting a beautiful yellow over the top here. I also push the yellow right over the red there. This is, like I said, the fun part. So you don't have to worry about making any mistakes other than just getting this yellow on. I think since it's so thin, there's not a chance that it's gonna have any tip dry. And if you're listening to this, you can see how I'm keeping the airflow on throughout this whole process. That means the finger is always down. And here, we're just gonna paint right through the tank filling up again. Kind of working our way around the model and hit all these angles just trying to get a nice strong coat of that yellow on
Oh, we got a little bit in the arm here. All right, then now with that color down, we're all done. We are going to repeat the process of emptying out the color. There's a couple ways you could dump it out. Another way I've seen people do it is um, just using the pipette again. Remove it, remove any excess. need water again. This is just other ways you can do it. Okay, we get our water in. Put it in the water pot. I'm going to add our cleaner. switch the collar to full control and then just like before rock it back and forth so we saw a little bit of there at the end some paint still in there so we're going to do it again And we just rock it back. Open it up. Force the water in. Now that we dispense that, we'll go back, put a little bit of water in. And just like that, yellow's out and we're ready for our next color. Okay, now that you're done using the brush, you're gonna wanna clean it. Um, thankfully the Ultra usually wouldn't require that much cleaning and I'm thinking if if you're just gonna come back to it let's say tomorrow or in a couple days um, you don't need to do a serious cleaning like this but it's so easy we'll just remove the bowl cup that already looks quite clean might not even need to do anything with that we're gonna unscrew the back handle We'll take off this rear chuck. And what you're going to see here is there's really not a lot going on here, but it works so easily. And what you'll notice here are these four notches. And that's just telling you what type of needle this is. This is a 4.5. So when you see four notches there, you have a 4.5 needle. Once we remove the back chuck, we just pull it through. And this is the one piece. Oh, we can already see some paint on there. But this is the one piece is fragile. The needle. Always be careful with the needle. 
everything else holds pretty well. Um, we'll unscrew this back here. There's a spring in here. So when you get to a certain point, and you can see it right there. We'll just pull this whole piece out. Oh, trigger came out too, but that's fine. The trigger, which is one piece, which is great. A lot of them are two. Take our collar off. The front. And this is our cap. And then inside of there, and there's our nozzle. And you can see on it, the four lines, just indicating, you know, this is a 4.5 nozzle. And looking through this, a little bit there, So this is what we're left with. You really don't have a whole lot going on in there. And it's really easy to take apart and put back together. You don't have to worry about um, getting things wet. This whole thing could sit submerged in water. You could take it out, um, put your paint in and it's ready to go. Okay, so we've gotten the cup, needle, nozzle checked. I mean, we did cleaned up the cap a little bit. We're just going to look into here. There isn't really anything, but there might be a little residue down in the front, so I'm just going to let up a Q-tip with some cleaner. Just do a little bit of work on it. Let's see if we pull out any color. Get around the edges there. There's a little something going on. Do the other side of the Q-tip here. See if we're still getting stuff. Nope. Sometimes it leaks into there, but that looks good. And then the new seal they put in this thing is so great at keeping the um, paint from going back. Some of the older brushes I've had, they'll have issues where it's coming all the way to the back where the trigger is, and that's just extremely problematic. Okay, now that we have it all cleaned up, we'll put it back together. And this is pretty self-explanatory, but we'll go through it together. Get our nozzle in. Screw our cap. Now the first thing you want to do is your trigger. And as you can see in there, there's a nice hole for it to sit right into. Very easy. And you can just do a quick push down. Pushing, working. some of these yeah it's slipping on my finger but you don't need to you don't want to over over crank anything here this is also another brilliant piece Let's screw it on just a little bit and what this allows us to do is just guide that needle in and you can actually go in from an angle because this is angled in. So no matter how you start, like that angle, it'll bring it in. 
or let's say we aim like this. It catches that edge and it um, assists and kind of just feeds it right through. We'll keep pushing. If you look at the end there, you'll see our needle pop through. Boom. Go back to here. Screw it on until you get resistance. Don't overturn it. The next step would be the collar. We're going to force that up in there. You'll hear a little tiny click. Then the handle. And it screws in so smooth. And it's only maybe two, three turns and you're in. And here we are, back together. If you wanted to get back to painting, you just slap the bowl in. Push, turn. We're back. Okay, here we are. Um, this is the finished product up to this point. And I think it really gives us a vibrant and a, definitely a smooth base to work from. That's one of the beautiful things about the airbrush is you're not going to have brush stroke showing or too much paint on the model. It really lays it down in a nice, thin, smooth um, gradient. And I hope this video will encourage some of you who've been hesitant to pick up an airbrush to go out there and get the... Uh, Ultra 2024 from Harder and Steenbeck. I really do wish this thing was around when I started because I swear to you, it is that easy to use and it'll teach you on its own. If uh, you're wanting any other products I use in the video, I'll have links to, to all that I can in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope you come back again.